Okay, here we are again, Donna Honeywell, uh, talking about my poor, poor painting, um, as I'm calling it, my PD poor painting for peritoneal dialysis. As you can see, eventually we're going to end up with paint in these bags. These had paint, they need to be refilled, and these are empties, which I'm going to fill up right now. These are uh, obviously bags using, used for peritoneal dialysis. If you're not familiar with what that is, it's a type of dialysis um, for kidney failure where you have a tube in your stomach and the fluids go in and dwell for a certain amount of time and then the um, fluids then go through a valve and go out. And so by flushing out your body, um, it's a way of uh, getting all the pollutants out of your body instead of using the fistula and going and sitting for three days a week. This um, peritoneal dialysis is usually done seven nights a week, every night of the week, so it's huge. Uh, and again, I'm making these videos as a way to raise awareness for how much for how great peritoneal dialysis is, but also for um, how much waste is created. So this is my way of reusing some of these things to do something fun. Uh, so I'm using Artist Loft paint. Um, I think this is a medium body paint. Um, you can use the really cheap, like 99 cent little bottles of craft paint, but, the, uh, but don't use quite, don't cut them down so much because the paint particles um, can only be stretched so far apart. They're just, they're just don't, aren't, they don't have that much pigment in them. So in this case, they have a lot more pigment in them. And you'll see, I'm first going to mix this a little bit with water to stir it up a little bit. And then I'm going to pour it, uh, one to one cup of this to two cups of this, which is Floetrol. It's a paint additive. Um, it helps it pour and it really helps um, spread the paint out, which will help give us cells. There's a lot of chemistry involved in this. So I'm going to mix this juice all up and then put it in one of these bags to show you how it's done. So now I need one cup of paint. Actually, I think it's a half cup of paint would probably do it. Let's do a half cup. Oh, quarter cup. Look at that. Okay. Quarter cup of paint. Sorry about that. It's been a few weeks since I've done this. So a quarter cup of paint and then I'm going to add some flow trowel and some water. And the float trowel sometimes has big floaters in it. And I want to make sure, particularly since it's going through such skinny tubing, that I um, run this through a screen to make sure that I catch any big floaters. Okay, so I'm going to use the screen again and again and again, my little tea strainer. <laughs> okay, so this, I just need to bring it up to two cups but it is much easier to mix paint uh, when you're at a lower volume. Um, think about mixing up a cake mix. If you throw all the liquids in there at once, it's really difficult to get the lumps out. If you start in the beginning and add a little bit of liquid, you can get things thinner. And um, this paint can be a real bear to mix. Um, the yellow, actually, different pigments also can be stretched further than others, at, meaning you can add more flow trial than others. Um, this yellow can be seriously stretched. I have found that it uh, is pervasive. It just has so much pigment in it. Um, but I'm going to stick to my recipe so I know what I've done. Now I've got that all mixed up. That's up to one cup. And then I'm going to add another cup of flow trial. So remember, it was one quarter cup paint of this type. If you go to an even heavier body, you can use less. And I'm going to bring it up to a full volume of two cups of uh, flow trial with the flow trial. So. Trying to do this so you can see it. And it's actually a little bit over, but for what I'm doing, it's not a big deal. It's not an exact science, and as I said, particularly with yellow, I don't have a big problem with it. Um, certain colors, like browns and pinks, um, don't have a lot of pigment in them, and I find they uh, work the other way, particularly pink. Pink just gets swallowed. Um, so depending on your color, and there are charts online, if you go uh, to YouTube, there are other artists that have posted all kinds of charts about many, many different formulas for doing this. Um, I'm using Floetrol because frankly, it's cheap. It's about $14 for this big bottle. <laughs> uh, if you're um, getting paid thousands of dollars for your paintings and you want them to last for hundreds and hundreds of years and be archivable, then you can go to uh, other more exotic mediums. Um, and, but I don't. I don't have the money. Uh, I work in very large quantities and I just do this mostly for fun. So, and I have found the paints, this does really well and handles really well. 
Um, and there, why did I do that? I need, last time I needed the blender, this time I didn't. What did I do differently? Oh, I think because I had such dark colors. Okay, now I am going to add a little bit of the silicone. This is actually a hair gloss that I use um, for my hair to keep it shiny. Um, and it has silicone oil in it, which um, will help create these big round cells. And so this is two cups, so I'm going to add really, I don't know if you can see that, but quite a lot of silicone in there. Probably two tablespoons, only because it's so much paint. And honestly, I can see from this paint that I probably could thin this again a ton more. But we're going to try this for today because it's still a very intense color. So now I'm going to take this, make sure all my paint is stirred. more of this last time. It was one cup to two cups. I don't know. Okay, well, we're going to do this for today. Um, get me some nice, bright neon yellow. And remember, I know neon yellow may not be everyone's favorite color, but when it mixes in with all the other colors, and I have a lot of uh, beautiful blues and greens, it will not stay yellow. It will mix and create yet different colors all together. Um, and I just find that the neons do really well. They don't come out looking uh, as neon as you would think. It actually comes out looking at, like a nice light green like you'd find in the springtime in a garden. So see, I'm gonna pour this into the hole. I used, remember I, I had to cut that hole in the side to get all the fluids out because these bags have been used. And there we go. You could actually put um, a clip on here as well and if you knew you were going to be storing these for a long time, that would be a great idea. I don't because I honestly find the air pressure pushing down on it really helps the paint flow. And I'm more concerned about getting more paint out faster because I have no patience. <laughs> so, as we have already determined. Uh, I just want to clean all this up. And then go to the next color. I think last time I did double batches, but that's a lot of paint. So as you can see, because I have the clip on here, there's a big air gap in here. I'll deal with that when I get in the other room. But there we go, we've got that color. So my neon green. Uh, so there you go, that's how you put the paint in bags and um, I'll let you go while I fill up the rest of my bags.